All right, y'all. We're going to get uh, started. I, I know we have some people on their way, um, but we'll get started now. And so, let's pray. Uh, mm. Our Lord, yeah. Mm. We can talk to you. It's just really amazing that we can do that, Lord. Uh, Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your continual mercy to us. <coughs> not giving us what we deserve, and then your graciousness giving us what we do not deserve on top of that. Thank you for the gospel. No matter what goes wrong in our lives, we can rejoice because we have the blood of Christ shed on our behalf, paying for all of our sins, not some, not a part, but the whole. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for the promises that we have in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the power of the Spirit of God to give us strength to do what we could never do on our own, putting sin to death, loving the unlovable, being patient with the unbearable. Mm, thank you, Lord. And uh, we pray, Lord, that you would be here, be um, amongst us. We know you're omnipresent, obviously, and yet we know that you show up, show out <laughs> in different times, so we pray you would do that. Own this meeting. May your spirit be pleased, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, all right. So the I got I got Plan A and Plan B. Okay. Um, it is the last Sunday of the month, and so typically what we do now is a Q and A. If there are no questions and uh, it just becomes really forced, then I have something else. That's a Plan B. So. Um, Open it up for questions. If you've never been here on a Q and A Sunday, what we do is APT. Ah, that's <laughs> funny because it's actually <laughs> true now. Um, yeah, so we, we just open up the floor to uh, any questions about um, really anything, um, and we will seek to find our answers through the Word of God. So. <laughs> uh, anybody else wants to go? Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, let's see. First Corinthians chapter 1 says, I'm in an ethics class, and uh, uh -huh. we learned, um, yeah, we learned about, the first people we learned about were the sophists, that's where we get the word sophisticated, and um, first Corinthians uh, one, I would say verse 17, and it says, uh, okay, well, I'll explain this first. Um, yes, yeah, so we learn about the Sophists, and they believe, the Sophies, uh, and they believe that life was all about how good and how well you could speak. Um, that's what life was about. Um, mm -hmm. If you could speak really good, then you were... You were good. That was how they, they judged whether you someone was good. Mm. So um, imagine, my, my teacher said, imagine that politicians, no matter how corrupt they are, as long as you can talk good, mm. you are, you know, you're good. That's who that's. So they spent all their life just um, basically on this thing called rhetoric. And rhetoric is how well you can speak, um, speaking abilities. Um, and so... You know, as we know, God hasn't blessed everyone with speaking abilities, and so people were left, you know, and with their logic and their culture, they were left, um, you know, looked down upon if you can speak well. Um, no matter how corrupt you are, as long as you can speak well, and mm -hmm. they didn't believe in truth as well. Right. Um, so I started thinking about, I was seeing in the barbershop the other day, and rhetoric is, you know, the ability to craft your words well, and I'm hearing just straight blasphemy. Mm -hmm. But everyone is, you know, even me, just like, man, you know, the beat's nice, and the way they, the way they tell their rhyme and their story, their philosophy is is great. Mm -hmm. But the corruption is just filled. Yeah. Um, however, I see that 
I'm trying to wrestle with this. Um, the, we know that the gospel is the power of God into salvation. Mm -hmm. um, and so, man, I'm just thinking, man, I don't even have to have nice rhetoric. It's just the gospel. I praise the Lord for that. Um, however, I do see that there is power in rhetoric. There's a persuasiveness, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 17, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Mm -hmm. So that's good news for all of us. Guess yeah. what? Praise the Lord, we don't have to have eloquent wisdom. Yeah. Um, just give the gospel, man. Christ crucified and risen. Um, but then I, you know, I looked up the word eloquent, and then I looked up, and then it popped into my head like there are places where Paul says, "I persuade you." Um, and it's a, there's a few in Acts. I mean, you can look it up in Google, but um, how do we deal with this? I don't know. Like, I do see that there is power in rhetoric. Like, there's power to do bad with it, and there's power to do good with it. But how do I reconcile the, these verses where it says, you know, Paul's like, I persuade, you know, I, I would hope to persuade you with this, you know? Um, the uh, One of the rulers that Paul stood before, he says, would you persuade me to be a Christian? Um, and so I just looked up a bunch of verses, but um, I know the truth. I mean, we don't have contradictions in the Bible, um, but I've just been wrestling with this interesting thought of, you know, rhetoric and eloquent speech and persuasiveness. Because um, I think some of us, I mean, I think there is a place to persuade people to come to Christ, you know? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's just what... Been going on in life. I've been thinking about for a couple of I kind of actually got something for that. Okay. I was going to think because I was going to think of the same thing. Um, and the Bible doesn't contradict itself. So Paul says that he actually displays <laughs> them in certain passages. And he says not to. Well, he says that we do not come with eloquent words and speech or wisdom. Mm -hmm. Um, except in cause its power. It doesn't mean that we don't preach with with wisdom if we can. It's great, like that God made us with some, some some incredible ability to speak well. It just means that we don't leave out the gospel. Um, so like first Peter three three uses the same language. And so he says uh, do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear. Uh, does that necessarily does that mean you know you can't you can't break your hair? Yeah. So in that that same language, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart. So let's say like make sure that that's paramount. Make sure the hidden person of the heart is what's available on on site on right. That that that's what the main thing is. And then if you know if you if you break your hair, cool. You got some really cool, but make don't sure let that, that be. Yeah. So in the same sense, don't let the eloquent wisdom because a lot of people praise people. Even pastors, just because they have eloquent words of, of, of speech, but they could be they could be missing. A, a lot of a lot of pastors preach without yeah. even even pointing to Christ. Right. The 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 issue isn't persuading. Um, the issue is what are you using to persuade? What what are you leaning on? So where, what's your ammo? Right. So. The, the text you were talking about, at least based on this uh, search here, the word persuade um, in um, the ESV, 2 Corinthians 5, 11, and it says, I think, shed some light on this, therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. So, it's the fear of the Lord, knowing that that's what's motivating us to persuade. So, if there is a judgment coming, our desire is to persuade men to flee the wrath to come. When we're preaching the gospel to others, we actually want them to believe. We want them to trust Christ by faith. We want them to forsake this world and repent of their sins. We're, we want them to be persuaded. But what are we using? The Word of God. And what are we trusting that will persuade them 
the Spirit of God, which is why we pray before we, we preach and we evangelize, and we're trusting that Christ is going to change their heart. Because we, yeah, because other people think, well, if, 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 if and, and some of, it's even possible that we think, if I just craft the gospel, just if, if, if I write it out perfectly, and I tell it to somebody, then they will believe. But that's, but that's thinking, I'm going to be eloquent in the way that I present even something as beautiful as the gospel, rather than relying on the Spirit of God to <coughs> join with the, the... The Bible says it's the foolishness of preaching. Foolishness. We're just talking to people. But the Lord is pleased to use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And, um, yeah, yeah, I think he even says... Um, you know, not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of his power. Right. So just to rely on eloquent wisdom and not the gospel, that it could be emptied of his power. Right, because then what we are what we are relying on to persuade men is did you hear my argument? Like that's that's one of the dangers of apologetics is and I've, I've been there. I've done it. Um, you think, you know, once I give this atheist this amazing argument, he will be persuaded that Christ is beautiful. And what happens? You present them with this just foolproof argument that what they are saying is false. And you prove them false. And they say, okay, you got me. But what about this? It is not the eloquence. It is not the... It's take the power of God. It See, bingo. When we realize that no matter how clever we are, no matter how intelligent we are, no matter how cool we are, no matter how much they like our clothes or our music or, right. or how nice of people, when we see, no, the only thing that's going to change a dead man is resurrection. <laughs> it, it, it completely and totally depends upon the power of God. Only the power of God can make a blind man see. And then he gets the glory. Otherwise, we do. Yeah. And, as, and, and it, that's the theme. That's the theme. Um, it is by grace that you are saved, apart from works, lest anyone should boast. Right. We don't preach with eloquent wisdom or, or, or eloquent words, lest the cross is emptied of its power. It's the same idea. Like, you no, know, the the cross needs to be seen as that which was powerful. God needs to be the one who with all the glory, all the accolades, all the applause, all the honor goes to. And we are seen as just jars of clay. <laughs> you know, it's like when you sit down to eat. You can have an amazing china, but nobody is like, oh, this china is so beautiful. No, it's like the food is the main focus. Thanks for giving me something nice for it to be on, but I'm interested in what I'm eating. And Christ is... We, whatever we have in this life, whether we eat, whether we drink, we're using it to be a platform to display the glory of God in all things. It's like Piper said, we use money in such a way to show that money is not our treasure, Christ is. We use words in such a way to show that words are not our treasure, Christ is. Yeah, so. yeah man. That's deep because... The scary thing, I guess, um, that the scriptures, you know, could persuade us with is God can see our heart. Mm -hmm. And if we're not relying on him and we're deceived, um, you know, maybe he won't you know, bless us. Like, maybe he won't use us because we're taking gifts. Uh, he, he has blessed some with eloquent speech. He has blessed some with um, zealousness. Mm -hmm. But to take that and to put it in the place of God, to take the gift, to put it above the gift giver, I don't think God would, would be pleased to use that. What do we have that we have not received? Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. He, he supplies seed to the sower, and then he's the one that brings forth the harvest as well. <laughs> like, he does it all. He yeah. puts seed in our hand, gives us the power to work, and then he's the one that brings forth life. And we get the benefit of plucking the fruit and enjoying it. It's all for him. So neither he who plants or he who waters is anything. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But you would still say that there is 
power and persuasive mm -hmm. speech? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Demons. It's crazy. Okay. Demons are crafty, right? They're arguably their main area is false religion. I mean, doctrine of demons. Mm -hmm. Like all the stuff that they could be using, they're using words. The warning in the last days is that people will depart from the from the truth and do what? Heap teachers. Teachers are people who talk to you, and they're going to be presenting you with doctrines that are going to scratch your itching ears. It's it's words. Um, words do have power. We we see that all throughout the Proverbs. You see that in James. Jesus talked about that you're going to give account for every idle word. Words are are, are serious. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It goes to the mind, and the mind is the battlefield where where everything is is uh, fought. And so, um, yeah, no words absolutely have power. People, I mean, it's 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 horrible. I mean, you 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 got this uh, this sex trafficking stuff where you have these 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 wicked men who persuade women to sell their bodies. And give the money to the men, and they think he loves me, and they do it with words. It's amazing. You got something like a Jim Jones, old school, not the rapper, but him too. Uh, the, 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 this guy led thousands to their, was it thousands or hundreds? I don't remember. It was a large number. To their death through words, these, these cults, these false religions. Um, they're just using words, speech. Somebody standing up there with a book and talking. It's an amazing thing. Um, but I guess the key is the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Life. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It just like I mean, even working at a at Kids Across America, and you ask kids like, you know, what their I guess worldview. What is love? You know, what are these things that you're taught? And they're getting this all from mm. these eloquent, nice rappers yeah. and you know, yeah. uh, Nicki Minaj's and mm. stuff like that. It's just like yeah, yeah, it's scary. But not many of you be teachers. Yeah, you open up your mouth, you start teaching. Yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like growing up, um, listening to that stuff. I mean, okay, big time. Yeah, I mean, I, I learned. I learned a lot from them, how to treat people, what was good, what was what a man is. Um, yeah, I, I got my whole worldview from what I was listening to, and it affected me, affected how I behaved. Obviously, it was a sin in my own heart, but um, yeah, <laughs> words have persuasive power. Cool. Yeah, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're doing Q&A. I'm about to ask this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all talking about? Q&A. Um, <laughs> we asked that question last time. Here's a Q's. Um, I know. Okay, well, the question is, <laughs> okay, can you be saved or think you're saved or try to live for the Lord? But not have a full understanding of the gospel, or not it it's not being so powerful. Like, oh wow, this is the gospel. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, all right. So in Acts, you got two examples. Um, Okay, so we got, uh, we'll start with Acts 10. Is that Acts 10? Yeah. <laughs> Starting with verse 1. I have dibs on the next question. 
Better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, <laughs> so funny. All right, so number one, uh, first one. At, at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort, a devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms generously to the people, and prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius, and he stated, and he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those who attended him. And having related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. So just just looking at this man, Cornelius, what would you say about him? Believer? Fear God. Fear God, devout man, gave generously his whole household, and he prayed continually to God, and he had an angel appear to him and say, your prayers have been answered. It ascended to, God, to, the, to, to heaven. He heard you. Call for this man to come, right? Um, so let's uh, fast forward to where Peter comes. So we're going to start with verse 23. So he invited them in to be his guests. The next day, this is when Peter shows up, the next day he rose and went away with them. And some of the brothers from Joppa accompanied him. And on the following day they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Ooh, wait, hold up. <laughs> Not looking so good anymore. What so happened? Pretty, right? um, well, no, he, he didn't know. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I too am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many persons gathered. And he said to them, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or visit or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. I asked then why you sent for me. And Cornelius said, four days ago about this hour, I was praying in my house at the ninth hour. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard. And your arms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who was called Peter. He is lodging in the house. And so here he is. So at verse 34, so Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. And then he tells him the gospel. Um, so, we have Cornelius, and I'll encourage you to check out the whole story, it's really cool. Um, so you have Cornelius, who, god fear, praying man, giving man, devout man. Prayers are heard, angel appears, everything looks good. Peter shows up, he falls down to worship him, because the angel said, sin for this man. So, there was... There were good things happening, but he wasn't a believer at that time. The gospel is preached, and he believes. Um, the Spirit of God falls on him. Um, so it's possible, and just like Peter said, um, God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. So if, if you look at this picture... Um, Cornelius looked good. Some people who would have met him would have said, yeah, you're, you're good, you're, you're going to heaven. But there was something lacking, and what was lacking was faith in Christ. He knew that there was a God, and he worshipped God. He knew that he should be um, being generous with his things, and he did so. He was devout, and he was faithful with what he knew. He had limited information, but the information he had, he was faithful with it. 
And what did the Lord do? He didn't leave him in that spot, but he said he saw him, and he sent him to someone who could uh, bring him along further. There's another in this same book. Um, uh, where is it at? Where, does anybody know where Paulos first shows up in Acts? Yeah, verse 18, verse 21. Yeah, verse 18. He's an elephant man. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, and here's another one. So we got Acts 18, 24. Thank you, brother. Now a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man, competent in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in, the, in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. Verse 26, he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when <coughs> Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. So there's there's this reality that now, and if you know anything about Apollos, I mean, you know, you got what First Corinthians. Who was Paul? Who was Apollos? Right? Like Apollos was. He yeah, he he was he was mightily used, but there was a point where he didn't know everything that he needed to know. And so in both situations, you have God's people coming alongside, explaining more, teaching more, showing more of who Christ is, and then we have growth. But can you believe during that time that he did not know, like, other things? You can consider yourself, like, saved? See, this is... There's a re we've talked about that. Okay, so... I don't know, that's a good question. Yeah, so the reality is... You have people who are saved by God, though they do not know all the ins and outs of theology. Um, they cannot explain to you what the Trinity means. They cannot explain to you everything that took place on the cross. But what they do know is that without Christ they are lost. He is the only hope for their salvation, and they're depending on him and him alone to save them. Um, now, there's a difference between someone being ignorant and someone rejecting, right? So, like I said, some, some people may not understand, uh, like you got here, Apollos, he needed things taught to him more accurately. Mm -hmm. Some people don't know, um, like, you know, it's like, like the Trinity, that's something that a lot of people, like, talk to some believers, they're like, I really can't explain the Trinity, but I believe it. <laughs> um, now, if the Trinity is being explained to you, and like, nah, I'm not, uh, 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 well, then now, now we see, okay, a true believer would never call a curse that which God calls good. Uh, and so I don't know if there's certain examples that you have in your mind of, can someone believe this and still be a believer? Um, do you? Not really. <laughs> so you, What's the question again? Uh, it's because it all goes back to my testimony question. right now. Oh, yeah. for, okay. for specific examples. So you have someone coming out of Catholic <laughs> Church, right? Um, they may have some of that stuff still in their back, right? Um, that they don't know is wrong. Um, so yeah, I guess I, I would need more specific because there's some stuff like you know if you believe that like if you believe like there's more than one way to be you know Jesus Christ is not the only way if you believe that any of your works will actually count on the day of judgment um, then no you're not a believer if you know like things like that um, if if you believe that that Jesus Christ was just a man he he was he was a good man but not the God man then there's problems there but uh, that's why I would need specific examples of like what you mean. Uh, well, it's because, like, it goes back to my testimony. Uh, it was one instance where I, like, cried out to the Lord, and I knew that I needed him. That's it. 
Yeah. I knew that I needed him, and that's when I started trying to know more about him and things like that. But I don't remember what like the gospel meant or what it was or like how it does now. That it makes like so much sense, and I just like I find it beautiful. I find it beautiful. But before, that's when I questioned, "What was I saved?" Like I don't know, mm -hmm. because back then I didn't know what it was. I like, right. didn't click. I remember repeating it when she would tell me, but I was just okay, this, this, and that. But it didn't make sense in my head. Right. It was just something. But now that I had came to grace, like it made total sense, and the Lord opened my eyes even more <clears throat> to see like what the gospel is. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's. I, I think there are a lot of people who would relate to you on that. Um, if you, uh, huh? No, I was just thinking, like, because then you, it also depends, because I know that here at Grace, when we give the gospel, we're more thorough, you know, we kind of give the whole overview, but what if somebody just says something as simple as, like, you're a sinner, you need Christ, and, like, I know that that's, like, very, like, you know, but, uh, um, you trying to figure out the gauge? Yeah, kind of, like. What what is it that because we are saying it's the power of the Holy Spirit that leads men to repent. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just trying to think like because maybe I don't know your situation, but what if somebody was in their position and they only heard something as simple as that? You know, like let's say they were depressed or something, and, they were, and somebody tries to comfort them and just let them know like this is who you are and this is and you need Christ, you know, yeah. and then they just start listening and then. It's as simple as that. Right. Well, yeah, that's that's why I wanted to show you all that Cornelius um, mm -hmm. piece because Jesus said this. He said, everyone who is on the side of truth listens to me. Um, when God is drawing somebody to himself, sometimes it's just like, boom, this is the whole message. But sometimes it's these gradual nuggets. It's like you're following a breadcrumb trail and you're picking up pieces and pieces and pieces and it's it's starting to, to come to life but you're walking towards mm -hmm. the cross you're walking towards <coughs> eternal life um, you ask John MacArthur when did you get saved he'll tell you I don't know I don't know when it happened I just know that the reality is one I'm saved now and two he drew me to himself um, there, there's a lot of people who would say that. They can't point to a date. You know, some people say, you should know the date, time, you know, everything, month, season, when God saved you. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that. I say, are you saved now? <laughs> are you alive now? Um, it's like uh, John Piper said, like, you know, if somebody asks you, are you alive? You don't pull out your birth certificate. You know, you <laughs> check for breath. Um, so. I guess people are... Yeah, I guess that would be like an unbiblical standard if you're Yeah, yeah, and and salvation is is a uh, it's a process. Yes, there's a reality of regeneration. There's a reality when your eyes are open and the scales fall off and you're born again. But the way that the Bible talks, and this is what Pastor Tim has been um, saying uh, as of lately, that the way the Bible talks about salvation is that it is this thing that is continually happening you're continually being saved um, day by day growing more and more to the image of Christ and, and the, the scripture tells us that the one that endures to the end will be saved um, and so if 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 you want to know was I saved when I first cried out um, I, I can't tell you that uh, question is do you believe today yeah and, like, it goes back to like Romans 116 like for I'm not ashamed of us because it was a God's power for salvation. And like I said, like, as I said back then, but I didn't, like, the gospel didn't make sense. But, like, this verse throws me off, like, but, I mean, I, I, now I know that I am saved. Yeah. So when you when you cried out to God because you needed him, what did you, like, some people cry out to him because they need him because they're in trouble and I need you to get me out of this trouble. Like, what, why, why were you crying out to him because you needed him? Oh, it was just, like, I, I wasn't happy, like, in my life didn't satisfy, like, I was just in need of something to fill my heart, and that void in my heart, and I knew it was God, because I had Nishay as, like, my, and my sidekick, which, yeah. like, just influenced me. <laughs> Batman <laughs> Robin. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she, like, she had something that I didn't have, and I was just surprised, because, like, she would kind of mention me in some way. Right. And I knew that I needed, like, God. Yeah. 
God. And I mean, but like I said, the gospel, it, it didn't make sense until I came to grace. Like, it literally, like, just... Yeah. Yeah, so that that may that may have been um, a situation where the foundation was being laid. Um, you know, it's 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 the it's the preparation for the the big meal. You begin to smell it. You start hearing the sizzling. You know, things are being laid out, and all of that is preparing for you to enjoy. And so, you know, as you're crying out to him, I need you. That's his kindness, showing you this life is empty. He's pointing you to himself, and as he's doing that more and more, then you get to hear the gospel in, it, in its fullness, and it all comes together. So, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if anyone can tell you at that time whether or not you were saved, um, but the good news is you believe today. Yeah. Well, yeah. basically, what you were saying earlier, um, it's like someone who's just out in the desert, you know, never even heard of. Never even heard of Christ's name, but knowing mm -hmm. there's some sort of God yeah. out there. You know? mm -hmm. um, even being, being faithful to him, us having a conscience, knowing you know, what is wrong, you know, what, knowing what he should not do and stuff like that. Right. God sovereignty can lead him to the truth. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the one who is on the side of truth will listen. And so we got here, like this example, Cornelius, it doesn't say that anybody was preaching to him. It doesn't say that he came across. I mean, he was a centurion. Um, he was a Gentile, so Jews didn't have any dealings with Gentiles. So it's not like he had Jews in his house teaching them the scriptures. And none of that. He just was faithful. He was praying. He was giving. And um, I mean, you got that Romans one situation. He's looking at creation. He's like, I know somebody. Um, you know, he wasn't bowing down to Caesar. He wasn't worshiping Caesar. But in all of that, he wasn't. He wasn't redeemed, but the Lord um, made sure that he got everything that he needed <laughs> to come to the truth. Yeah. My question? Yeah. Did that answer your question, though? Did you? Oh, no. No, I'm just saying, like, like, oh. well, like, no. No, I did. He did. Oh, okay. I'm like... <laughs> You cannot be saved without the gospel. Okay. Um, you, Jesus said, "I am the way, right? Um, I'm the truth, the life. No, no one, no one, yeah. no one comes to the Father but by me. Um, so there's there's no other way to come other than faith um, in in Christ. And understanding it would be something different." Yeah, I mean, again, like there, there's aspects of the gospel that we are we're, we're still getting, we're still learning, we're st we're, we're constantly growing, we're, we're still seeing like, wow, this is this is amazing. I mean, you 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 hear a sermon or something, and you're like, wow, I never looked at it that way. Mm -hmm. So think of it this way: for all of eternity, we're gonna be <laughs> amazed and singing and talking and worshiping <laughs> God for the gospel. For Jesus Christ, He's going to be in physical with with scars still. Like the gospel is going to be for all of eternity on display. So it's definitely an inexhaustible topic, um, but there are aspects of it that must be believed in order to have faith. And so, yeah, hope that brings you some comfort. Okay. You want, to, you want to go to? Uh, okay, I had a discussion recently with one of the brothers from the church, and uh, just kind of want to. I don't know. I don't want to ask this question. I'm just going to kind of put it out there like how we were having the discussion. Okay. But basically, it was on. Uh, and not only that, I mean, this has been going. I watched a video. I watched Bodie Botham's sermon on it about culture. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's good. It's good. Also, listen to somebody else that I forgot. But basically, the whole deal was this. Mm -hmm. Going out, oh, how far can we go out into the culture? Like, because we were talking about, like, uh, we were hitting on things like going to the club, going to parties. Going, where's the line? Where's the, yeah, how far can we go? And... Now, and then that's one part of it. The other part of it is, okay, then, we, then we're speaking about maturity and liberties and 
you know, you get to this point where it doesn't affect you. But then, what do you do with holiness and purity and things like that? So how do you put all of that together? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah. Well, I think asking the question, how far can we go, is a is a is an error in that okay. thinking. That was Eric's question. Under the bus. Time out. Time out. Time out. <laughs> How far can we go? How far can we go? Was my question. He said the line. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that was mine because I was told, you know, well, we can do this and that, and they try using scripture and uh, things like that. Yeah. So yeah. 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 So and yeah. and here and no nah, and so here what I'm saying like. The, you have people in a relationship, and, the, and the, the man is asking, well, how far is too far? Okay. Like, think about it this way. Let's say that's your daughter, and you have a guy coming up talking about um, how far is too far with me and your daughter? You want to hear those things? No. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Anywhere is too far. You I need have, to I have a question. Yeah. I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't ask it correctly. I didn't ask it correctly. Okay. When it comes down, I know, right? I, when I sit down, I want to ask, though. Okay. I have to stand. I was going to go over there and stand, but no. Okay. It was to, to uh, basically, we were talking about, you know, how far can you go to go reach out to the culture? To give them the gospel, to win them over, right. things like that. That's what it was about. Okay, uh, so it's sorry, so it's not going to the club to no, no, not to just chill, but like chill, going but going to the club, hanging out with my friends, trying to because they like to do that. I'm gonna go with them uh, and then try to win them over that way. Or I'm gonna go in there and reach out to the people in that environment. Right, right. That's what he was he was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I wasn't clear on that. The, the model is Christ. In Christ. As you can see, he didn't go. He didn't go to places where he, he couldn't keep control, where he wasn't like, like you can't really give the gospel in the club. I mean, that, that's what I said. That's what I said. But yeah, yeah this is the, this is the argument, and I saw I was. I mean, I pretty much know how I feel about it, but I want to make sure that it's just not like a preference. Like, oh, that's how I feel. I want to make sure that it's the biblical. Well, back up on that. Let's let's uh let's. Uh, Enough believers in here. What what do y'all what do y'all say? Oh no no, I'm just uh, just throwing it out. Like I had talked to um, my boss because she did that back in college. Oh, and yes. I was like, what is your mo what was why did you do it? And she said, my whole motive to do that was to sh not just to be able to share Christ, right? So like when people ask me why did I not why am I not drinking? Well, because this is the reason. So she that was her motive, right? Right. But. At the end of the day, she was still in that situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, right. So, like, it's like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah so, okay. Oh, well, what do y'all I have another one. That, that went to <laughs> hers. <laughs> Man, I know the answer. <laughs> 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 oh, no, it's not a question. It's an it's a, it's a, it's a opinion. It was my opinion. Oh, okay. This one's my opinion. Well, that's what we opened it up for. So. Yeah, yeah. Gone. Because it was to her boss's situation. Yeah. Pastor yeah. said, well, she hung out with these people so that way they could see and then say, oh, well, why don't you do this and that? And then she would tell them and then hang out with them again. And I was just trying to think, like, man, I guess, okay. I was like, man, like, I was just trying to picture, like, would Christ do that? Would he hang out with somebody and then just sit there and just wait? And then once they ask him a question, he tells them why. And then the next week, go hang out with them again and just sit there and wait. And then they ask again and he tells them the reason. <laughs> And they go the next week, and then sit there, and then just wait. But you're amongst them, enjoying everything. All you're doing is you're not drinking with them. Mm. But you're not really doing anything besides that. Mm. I think Christ kind of took over the whole. That's that's what I was thinking. Situation, yeah. He wouldn't just yeah. chill and wait for them to ask a question. Yeah, he did. Like yeah. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what my argument was for that. Yeah. Good um, really good point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, last night. Okay, so I'm all my friends at school like to go out a lot, so they were all going to this uh, this like Texas agave. Anyways, like this, yeah, agave. It's not a fruit. Yeah, but it's like a potato. That's agave. It's like a with beef. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so they were all going, and so um, and last semester I go with them. It was fun. Last night I was thinking, like, you know, it's probably not good because every time I go, I like, you know, 
leave, and I'm like, that was a glorifying God. So I'm like, the whole time, I'm like, I'm sure you Okay, so last year I decided not to go, and I went to this mm-hmm. store. That is cool. And so I was sitting there, and this guy that I TA for, so I don't really know him. But he was going to go out with his friends after, and so he was talking to me. And he ended up staying for like two and a half hours and talked to one third about the gospel. He's not safe. Mm-hmm. You know, he was asking me, like, oh, what are you doing tonight? And I explained about it. And then he said, you know, anyway, it came down to it, like, at the end of the night, we talked about God for probably two straight hours, and he went home knowing he was a sinner. Before last night, he had never, he said he hadn't thought in so long about what happens when he dies, and he left it terrified of going to hell. Like he was sitting there, and his eyes were just watering. And, you know, so I was explaining to him, I was like, telling him how cool it was that God used that opportunity for you. Mm. Any time that you, you know, you might choose to go to the club with your friends as a link to them, you know, their friend, and hopefully that leads them to Christ. But <laughs> your mindset when you choose. Like just staying out of the Yeah. It was cool. It was cool. Mm. Okay, is it biblical? Like that's good. I like how you said it. Uh, to be a witness in these places, like, is it biblical to do those things? That's my thing. Well, it depends on what we're talking about. Like, I, I don't think it's. I honestly believe that's boundaries to it. See, I I think the idea is that you can be in that environment. It's like I can be in a room full of smoke and not walk out smiling like smoke. Like if you go to the club, what's going on in the club? For well, let's just what music is going on. So you're you're being bombarded with godless, pagan, you can go to a jazz club. sensual. Huh? Right. So that's what I'm saying. Like it, it like it, 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 it depends on what we're talking about. Um. What else is going on in that environment? There's a lot of sensuality that you're being exposed yeah. to. Um, I mean, that that is a very, very dark place. I know some people would go to the club after it's over, standing in the parking lot witnessing the people. I know some people would do that. Um, you know, I, I think there's some danger there as well, but that's that's much better than being inside of there um, just trying... Kind of like what I was saying earlier, like, if you think that if I'm just nice to these people, they're going to see my niceness and want my Jesus. Jesus was the nicest man who ever lived, and they cried out, crucify him. The same people he healed, cast out demons for, fed. Weren't they worship? Yeah, laying down palm branches, Hosanna, King of, blessed be the name. These are the same ones that were screaming, crucify him, crucify him. Let his blood be on me and on my children. Being nice is not going to cut it. Um, Doing things for people is not going to make them want your Jesus. Um, If you understand that people hate God, like really understand, like they hate God. Not the God they made up in their mind, but the true God of the scriptures. They hate him. No, 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 how nice you are, how fresh your outfit is, how, well, any kind of idea that you think, like, this, this, when I do this, this is going to get them. No, the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. That's it. That's our only ammo. We got a gun. It only has one bullet, and it's the gospel. Um, you try anything else, th- there is. you have no promise of any uh, assistance from the Lord in bringing about salvation. Um, and so, yeah, there's there, there's the hope that, okay, I'm going to get an opportunity to talk to them, and they're going to ask me, like, well, why don't I drink? You know, there's people who go to the club that don't drink. One, one, of, the, uh, one of my coworkers, she's never had a drink in her life, don't smoke, eats well, exercises, <laughs> been with the same dude for, what, nine years, you know, faithful to him, all that stuff, living a very moral life. My... Uh, my neighbors have talked about them. They're, they're Latter-day Saints. Nice to their children, pay their taxes, dress nice, mow their lawn, good neighbors, bring cookies and Christmas, all that stuff. Like, just thinking if if I behave in such a way, it's like, again, John Piper, like, he's like, John Piper, like, 
it, people don't care that you keep the Ten Commandments. Just don't steal from them. Just don't commit adultery with their spouse. If you want to do that, go on. You want to live in your moral bubble, go on. That's not going to, oh, wow, you go to church on Sunday? I want to go with you. And that's like a lot of these, these seeker-sensitive churches, like they, they think, like, if they just think we're cool, you know, if, if, we're, if we're relevant, like, look, we, we're, we're going to have a whole sermon series around this movie, or we're going to have this amazing introduction with this lights and smoke in this band, and then they're gonna, we're going to give away free cars. Just tell your neighbors. We're going to have a, a helicopter Easter egg drop, and bring all your kids, and that will make you want Jesus. Like, no. And if you, if, if, if you studied the other religions, none of them do that. You go to Islam, it's the same thing that they've been doing for centuries. You go to uh, Judaism, it's the same thing they've been doing for centuries. You go to Buddhism, the same thing. You go to, to the Hindus, the same thing. It's this traditional old school. They're not bringing in the lasers and the lights and none of that stuff. We have the truth, and for some reason we think it's not enough. We need to tack on all this other stuff. It's like, yo. That, that's that's the deception of the enemy. No, Jesus Christ was enough. When he showed up on the scene, lame people stood up, blind people saw, dead people heard, demons jumped out of people. Like we have the, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Almighty God on our side, and He's promised us, preach my message. It look, they're gonna say it's foolish, they're gonna say it's a stumbling block. They're going to despise you. They're going to hate you. But be faithful to preach it, and, and I got your back. <laughs> I will save people by this message. The fields are ripe. I just need people to go. But the big question is, like, is this really necessary to take it to the That's what I said. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah. What do you call it? Like, is that the only way that your co-worker will hang out with you? Is that, what is that you know? And does it have any side effects? Because... You know, it's, it's, uh, I thought about my cousin talking about when he would fight. And he said, yeah, like, when people get in a fight, all they think about is how they're going to hit the other person. But not many people walk into a fight thinking, like, I'm expecting to get hit. <laughs> like, prepare for that. Like, when you go to those situations, you think, I'm going to do this good. I'm going to reach these people. Are you thinking about, I'm going to be impacted and affected and exposed to all this stuff? Maybe that's not good for me. I can barely watch commercials without stumbling. Why am I thinking about going to a club? Right? Like, we, we, we got... We need to take ourselves and how we've been doing and struggles in, in consideration. And the warnings of Scripture that, do, that tell us... <laughs> flee from sexual that, immorality. Flee from sexual immorality. Bad company really does corrupt good morals. Your, your good really can be spoken evil of. Um, so no advantage corrupt. No, thank you. Uh, missionary dating. Isn't that the same thing? Like, I flirt to convert. Wow. That's terrible. Oh, that's terrible. I'm in love with a church girl. Isn't that the movie that came up? Flirt to convert. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> See, but, and, and I agree, and, and that, this oh. is the thing that people come at me with that stuff. Like, you know, like I gotta, I gotta go be in the in the culture and fit in, and do what they do. That way, they see me out, and they can see that I'm not just this holy, holy, holy person. And that I know I'm not there. And then that, <laughs> um, and then that. <laughs> my bad, Toffee. No, no, you good. Like, good, no, good. But you know what I'm saying, like. I gotta make them. I want them to understand that being a Christian, like you know, like I'm, I can still communicate with you. I, I can still be cool. I still have freedom to do these things. I don't want y'all think I live in this bubble. Why not? Um, what? This is what they say. I but what, what's wrong with the? I, I mean, what's wrong with the bubble in the box? Like, what's wrong with boxes and bubbles? <laughs> um, <laughs> like, like what? I, I just. I, I think boxes and bubbles conveys look. You live your life by a bunch of. Hard rules. But if they think that, look, they, they think that anyway. Yeah. Look, what, what, what does the scripture say? John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, behold, he has a devil. 
the Son of Man comes eating and drinking, they say, Behold, a drunkard and a friend of sinners. <laughs> it doesn't matter. They, the world hates God. If you are rigid, they're going to say, You're too rigid. If you're trying to blend in, see, you're just like us. They don't need excuses to hate God. They have as many as they um, can conceive with. It's, it's much better that we, like, Christians are supposed to be those distinct people. Read Daniel. You got the, the, the three Hebrew dudes. Uh, <clears throat> they were distinct. Daniel was distinct. J uh, Joseph was distinct. Christ was distinct. His dis his disciples they stood out from everyone else. Like they knew, you've been with Christ, and that's good. It's listen. If you're in trouble, you're looking for a police officer. You're looking for somebody who stands out. Wait, one guy has this uniform on. He's driving a certain kind of car. When I'm in trouble, I need to know who to go to. I'm not looking for the undercover. <laughs> cop. I want the guy who's in uniform. I want to see the fireman in full garb so I know, look, there's a fire in my house. Where's the fireman? Is there a doctor in the house? Like, they need to know, okay, like, sis, shh, this world is empty. There's nothing. She don't want to go to somebody who's doing the same stuff for her. She's looking for somebody who's different, who stands out, someone who is living this holy life because they're not. Um. Yeah, I'm. I, Jesus was typecast. That's that holy dude. <laughs> that's that dude who's always preaching about his father. That's that one who. That's all right. The disciples were typecast. Paul was typecast. They were in boxes. He says, "Imitate me, as I imitate Christ." We're Christians. That's a. That is a box. <laughs> Christ-like. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Wear it uh, with as a badge of honor. Anyway, kind of went on. No, that's good, man. Because I just, I just get just thrown at me all the time. And it's always the same thing, becoming all things all men. You all, people always want to use that one. You yeah. can become all things. But, but, but they, they try to take a different route of, right. I'm going to spend time with them and do what they like to do. Right. I'm going to become like them in that, in that respect of reality. I think, like, uh, I was saying, so, you just gotta, I guess, be wise and more than likely it's a waste of time. Yeah. Now, again, are there times? <clears throat> yeah, yeah there, there, there are times when, um, like, Eric said, okay, you know, there's, there's a jazz situation. Um, you know, husband and wife, we get invited out to dinner. There's a jazz, you know, people are drinking. We're having this one on one conversation with these people. Um, you know, like it was said already, when, when Jesus was in the midst of sinners and the Pharisees came, why are you here? It was very clear. Jesus spoke in front of them. I came for the lost. Like some of the people, like some of the people who have this mindset and they're hanging around these people, they've never called them lost. I came to save sinners. They've never called them sinners. Like, Jesus like, wait, they know why I'm here. I know why I'm here. <laughs> okay, I like it. It, It's clear. And I'm running this show. Like, all eyes are on me. I, I'm controlling this conversation. I'm not just sitting there and listening to all the filth and, well, you know, I'm just going to be here as a good friend and they're going to they're gonna see that, you know, I'm, I'm not that weird. And, no, I don't laugh at that joke, so that's going to stand out to them. And, no, thank you. I don't want any of your weed. And I'm just going to be this, here. This is real, man. Like, yeah. Like I, I've, I've tried to, like, early in my world, I tried to do that stuff. And all they say is, okay, you don't smoke. Yeah, see, I was in, I was in like, the smoke side for this Bible open, and they, they were just taking shots. And I was like, okay, let's keep going, let's yeah. keep going. And, like, one of them, you know, ended up getting saved, and then like, he fell away. But, like, the whole house just fell apart after he got saved. Mm. Well, I, I like what you're saying, because then that, that shows the intentional, like, like you said, like they knew why he was there. Yeah. So yeah. like we people but, that but at the same time they can know that you're genuinely the friend at the same time. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So here, here's the Bible because that's the way it is for me in his house on the east side. You know, like, but 
but at the same time, they know that I'm their friend. Yeah. So yeah. We don't, because then, so. we, yeah, there's, there's a pendulum. There's one side that's just like, oh, you know, we're just going to be, uh, right. we're just going to be there in the scene, you know, quiet. And, right. Yeah. yeah. You're going to see my Christian t-shirt. And then yeah. we've got the other side that's like, no, I'm not here to be your friend. Right. I'm just here. You're going to hell. Yeah. And, then, and then they're just like, that's why Christians have a bad name as well. Because you're going for right Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I haven't been in too many of the situations on the other side of the pendulum. Um, mostly I've seen this side. Yeah, it's but I know it's there. I know there's people who, who definitely do that. And you can tell it a mile away when someone actually cares about you. Like they're interested in, in who you are. And um, yeah, I, 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 yeah I'll, I'll listen to you and I want to hear your heart. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm here for a reason. Okay. To the same thing. So how do you, like, like, because Eric, Eric made a really good point. You also want to make sure they know, like, you know, I'm your friend and I'm here for you. But then also being intentional about, you know, I'm here for this reason. How do you, how do you kind of put that together? And then also like knowing that you have to spend time with these people, for example, like say coworkers or something, or you're in a group setting. Um, how do you? Because then you're also saying, like, okay, well. You don't want to just sit there and be quiet and be like, I'm not going to laugh at that. You know, that's not, you know, that's not person. Like, how do you put all that together? Yeah. It's well, kind of tough. well, there's some situations that you have to be in. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're at work. You have to be at work yeah. and you're surrounded by sinners. Mm -hmm. um, you're not, they didn't hire you to start preaching Jesus. Right. So that, you know, yeah, that would be a, a, a spot where the only thing I really can do is, is be quiet. Um, but if they're talking freely, then, you know, Hey, I'm yeah, I mean, y'all open up the floor, and so, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make, you know, again, depending on, on the job, um, again, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard, hard better, you know, uh, that actually happened at work the other day, mm. I actually came to get, uh, get an we were just chopping it up, just being passionate, we were actually chopping it up, <laughs> oh, hey, you see what he did there? <laughs> <laughs> Because he's a barber. Shout out. We were just talking to something like that, and you know, one of the guys was sitting there, and he overheard, so he started, he started asking, you know, he started like asking, like, oh, so what do you eat? And stuff like that. Now that gave us like a perfect opportunity to deal with the gospel and stuff like that. It was, it was a real, real cool, but yeah. You know, uh, we yeah. Yeah. So, not hiding your face. Yeah, that's 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 what I was going. Yeah, you you. So the question is, how how do you do that? Don't don't lie. Like from from the beginning, like that. That's what we see about Jesus. Everybody knew what he stood for. Everybody knew what he was about. And when you meet people, let them know. Hey, this like you know. Again, I I don't want to give you a, a script or whatever, but. When, when you befriend people, it's good to let them know up front, listen, this is who I am, and I have a desire, like, I, I, as, much as, the, as much as possible, as much as the, the opportunity opens itself up, I, I want to talk to you about your soul. Um, now, you know, there's, it's, it's been said, like, you don't want to walk up on people the first time you meet them and tell them you're going to hell. But again, I, I don't I don't really see that happening as much. Um, I've done that before, but that was more like on a, a witnessing situation. But like when you're befriending people and you're building relationships with people, yeah, family members, um, neighbors, things like that. Like letting them know who you are, lest this happens. See, all this time you've been talking to me, you just been waiting to get to this, like. You don't want to deceive people. You don't want to be like, ha ha, you know, <laughs> finally, now I'm at that. Um, but no, like, for, from the beginning, I mean, that's that's something that's respected. Even, like, in relationships, that's respected. This is what I, I am approaching you because I want to marry you, and let's start moving that way. Like, from the beginning, um, you know, let, letting, letting our intentions be seen, letting everything be... Uh, honest and and open. Um, that's at least that's that's what I see in the scripture. I, I I don't I don't see anybody doing the. Um, I'll let you know 
where I stand later on. I, I, I see this, this is who we are um, from the beginning type stuff. And like I said, it's, it's helpful because then people know when I need help, when I need hope, when I need truth, I'm going to go to you. Um, and that happens. At least it's happened in my own life. Has anyone uh, happened to anybody else? Like because because they knew who you were, they knew like you made it clear up front. Like they they, they approached. Yeah. They're ready for a spiritual conversation. They came to you. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And you I mean you, you want to be likable. You don't want to be a jerk. You don't you want to be that guy who's just constantly nitpicking people and just tearing them apart and. Jesus juice. Jesus juice. Jesus juice. Jukes. I don't understand. So, follow me on Facebook. I'll, I'll post something really good. Oh, I do. Follow. <laughs> well, keep your eyes peeled. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. But again, like I said, at the end of the day, Jesus was the nicest man who ever lived. He was the kindest. He was the most compassionate, most loving, most merciful, easiest to get along with, and they cried out for his blood. So, at the end of the day. It's, it's weird. I, I made this. I made my position known at work. It's, it's a. It's, it can be a very awkward environment, but uh, it's it's pretty cool. Like just every once in a while, I'm getting even my own boss. So I'm like, would you get offended if I were to leave? Like, just like. Wow. Wow. <laughs> really? And um, wow. my political my coworker the other day was just like. Is it a good thing that I told my wife I don't want to take it? It's like, mm. all that stuff is coming from like, that's, wow, that's like, encouraging. Like, all, all because like I, I, I'm pretty sure because I like I made the stance like clear like from the get like right. And, and if, if, if they knew the gospel, they would like to hear it. I don't think I don't believe it. Like, mm. My general manager when they came up, when they gave me a promotion, mm. they asked me, uh, is there is there any kind of conflict that could arise? And I was like, yeah, and just some practical ways of doing that since we're talking about jobs, like on your lunch break, read your Bible. Like, you know, you don't got to walk up to every person. Did you know I'm a Christian? Hey, I'm a Christian. By the way, I'm a Christian. Like, you, you don't have to do that. For sure. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> on, uh, on, on, on Gene Friday, <laughs> Jesus Christ saved me. Hey, now, if they let you, you like, like, do it. But, I mean, just, just, uh, no, my school has Gene Friday. Um, but, yeah, right, yeah. Um, uh, I think it was Zach. And I was like, hey, Zach, I want to tell you about Jesus. Or, or did you mind if I tell you about Jesus? Mm. Pick the day or whatever. And actually, just out of the desert or no, but it's just been in there. Mm. Mm. It's good. Yeah, it works. Kind of late. I don't, I don't want to keep y'all, but I'm I'm enjoying the conversations. Are there any other questions? I'll go ahead. Yeah. Here's a whole list. Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah. And then that, like, uh, I think we also noticed that uh, we, we want to say this is totally the only place in Scripture where it says what not to pray for. Uh, I do not say that you should, that one should pray for them. This this is spot in Jeremiah. Um, so don't pray for them. Okay. Um, just because they just continued in their in their foolishness. But um, yeah, from what I understand, is that it's talking about actual physical death, not eternal death, because all sin leads to eternal death. But the death that is being spoken about here, again, just from what I what I understand, if anybody got any other take on it. Um, but yeah, that's talking about physical death. Like there are some sins that will lead to your physical death. Um, drunk driving will lead to your physical death. Being in a gang will lead to your physical death. Drugs will lead to your physical death. Um, suicide will lead to your physical death, literally. Um, it is specific more like it's outward, like a, I guess, outward, like a sin issue. But if he sees his brother committing a sin, not even his blood, so that's that. So, I guess a sin that isn't like harming his, his health or his life, but his yeah. life, uh, will, God will give him life to live. Yeah. So again, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not real um, clear on it, but from what I remember in my like when we were going through it, like that stood out to me too. If I remember correctly, has anybody heard anything about it? Jeff? Yeah. So maybe you know homework. <laughs> I read it last time, so I was wondering. I don't know. You got one of those, those good ones. But if I'm correct, that's what I remember. Physical. Physical. Yeah. Well, so we'll stop there. Um, next week, we'll do my plan B. We're going to look at. Um, First Corinthians chapter was it four, We're talking about being an example, um, not let any, not letting anyone despise you for your youth, um, and some really good stuff in this book right here. So, Lord willing, we'll do that next next week. The Lord says the same. Uh, Father, uh, thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. Thank you for time that we get to, to do this, Lord, and um, the freedom that we have to do it in. Ah, Lord, uh, Lord, help us. Uh, help us to see the balance, Lord, of living in this fallen world, mixing it up with unbelievers without participating in their foolishness or or endangering our own purity, endangering our own testimony. Lord, you did it perfectly, and we're not so successful at times. So we need your grace, Lord. Help us. I'm so thankful, Lord, that this room is filled with people who are actually interested in pleasing you and the desire to reach the lost. So pray, Lord, that you would you would honor that and help us. Thank you for the food. May it strengthen us. May we eat and drink to your glory. Be with the fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen.